cilantro lime salmon. We're gonna use fresh limes. We're gonna use fresh cilantro. And I have, I told you I was a mix fella. I have a mix right here. It's called my fish mix. <laughs> my fish mix. My fish mix consists of sea salt, dill, and a little pepper. Sea salt, dill, and a little pepper. I do believe they have a recipe card with that on it. I think that's out there. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start to put together that mix that's gonna go on the fish. We're gonna take a couple of limes, fresh limes. A key lime is better. Key lime is a little smaller than this. But what you do is you wanna juice your lime. I think you can see it on the, t the TV screen. And what this, they this do classroom is, is great. You've got screens all over that comes you in just close. Start to loosen up the inside. Oh, they got it. They 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 mix me wrong over here. Okay. I got my limes in there. I'm gonna take a, a little of this fresh cilantro. This is one of my favorite herbs. It's a really good flavor to it. And we're just gonna take a little bit of it. We're going to chop it up a little bit. We're going to take the stem off. And we're going to take this part of it. Put it in a little ball. And One thing that's really good about using fresh herbs when you grill specifically is they combat um, the antioxidants that come up. Or I'm sorry, they combat the carcinogens that come up. All the antioxidants that are in the fresh herbs, um, they actually act as a buffer because when you have something like a rib that drips down on the charcoal, that it chemically changes and it comes back up into the meat. So it acts as a buffer, as well as just the nutritional value that you get when you use those fresh herbs and fresh vegetables as opposed to um, getting it out of a can or frozen. Olive oil. Olive oil. One of the healthy oils. Uh, even healthier oil, I believe, and, and Dana can help me out on this, is coconut oil. It's even healthier than this. It's, plus, it's a high smoke temperature on coconut oil, and you can ingest coconut oil because it helps your chains, uh, your small chain um, aminos start to work and break down fat. It's a wonderful thing, wonderful thing. I added a little, a little garlic to that a little olive oil, and I have these really, really pretty pieces of salmon. Oh, yeah. No skin. My wife really Did you don't peel like the these. membranes? Did you peel those like you peeled the No, no. Th these actually, you can actually buy these like this. We're gonna put another plug in for the meat block. All right. <laughs> and what, what you do is, it, it's not really hard to do these. It, it doesn't take a lot. You drop it in like that. Oh, we need smell-o-vision. Oh my gosh, this smells so wonderful. You can smell you the lemon. Oh. And you, you, you just, I'm gonna do a couple and then uh, we're gonna turn it back over to Chef Greg while I finish up. You take a couple like that and you do them like that. And then you take your, my love went, my love, oh, here it is. My love, this is what I call all seasonings are love. You take a little love, and you sprinkle a little love. All over. And you don't have to do both sides because it's so strong. If you, if you just want a light heavy seasoning, what we'll do is we'll flip it and we'll do the other side. So Ooh. what you have, we're gonna cook this off for you. Yeah, it smells so good, huh? I have found, and the purest in me had to take, uh, um, I had to be checked on this. Um, as a caterer, it's not about what I like, it's about what they like. And so one of the questions that I will do, I'll say when I go to someone's home, what is your favorite barbecue sauce? 
and a lot of people say sweet baby rays or whatever out there and so what I do is I take and make that my base that make it that make that my base sauce so now so what I did was now for the purists that we're supposed to make the sauce from scratch and, and we, matter of fact we have to take time to thank the Culinary Institute of Michigan for having us here and the staff and giving us free realm. We have to thank them for doing this. I cheated. What I took, I took Sweet Baby Race, because that is just, when I go to people's homes, that's about 80% what people like. Now, so, uh, I'm teaching you how to make a Hawaiian barbecue sauce, and I'm cheating. I'm not, this is one of those times where you can say, well, fresh fruit is better. It is. But there's some times when you can take and do otherwise. So what I have is mandarin oranges, pineapples, cherries, fruit cocktails, and lime juice, and lemon. Now, what I did was I took and remembered that little wine thing that I had that I said is good for making soup. What's the name of it, Toad? Emotion Blender. Thank you. I can't remember the name. The Emotion Blender. And what I did was is you can take an Emotion Blender and put it in a bowl and stir, and it will chop everything. It will chop everything fine. Or you can take it in a blender, make a blender. This is a Hawaiian barbecue sauce. Out of the, every place that we go, this is the most requested sauce. And I, as a purist that you should make it from scratch, it's one of the things, do I make it from scratch and make it the way that I like, or do I make it the way that my customers like? And we make it the way that the customers like. So this is Hawaiian. Now, ready, go. <laughs> This enough. Chef Greg. Okay, ready? One, two, three. All right. Why? <laughs> well, these things, when you get them from the store, have a lot of sugar in them. A lot of sugar. They also have one of the worst things, high fructose corn syrup. That is, it's just a disgusting, repulsive product that's almost in everything now. It, it's just awful for your body. It's so, it's repulsive. It's so bad. <laughs> but now certain things, like if you notice, um, Chef Greg did add the no sugar added and the 100% juice. So, if, or if you do it in a light syrup, another thing is to rinse it. However, when you're making something like this, it's okay to be a purist in the fact that this is the recipe that he likes and that he does. What we were talking about earlier, that the product should stand on its own. So it's okay to have a full flavor something, just like butter. Just use it in moderation. It's not like you're going to be eating this every single day. Mm -hmm. So it, everyone's mantra should be, enjoy what you like. You never know what tomorrow's going to bring. So saying that, just don't jump on you know, a whole cup of barbecue sauce for one piece of you know, a rib or chicken. When we go somewhere, we, we go somewhere and less specifically request it, we never take the time to take sauce and sauce it and put it on the grill. We don't do it. What we do is, like we say, the meat should speak for itself. And so what we do is we put the sauce on the side. Another thing you can do is heat it up as well. You can add brown sugar, but we don't want to add brown sugar because sugar is the problem. Like she said with the lactose, it's, it's a crazy ingredient. The best way to really make a Hawaiian is use fresh fruits, if you have the time. If you don't, remember, use this. And a lot of the times we find we end up going home with a lot of barbecue sauce. They love the barbecue sauce because we'll make one or two, a hot, a mild, but they love the taste of the meat. And that's what you want. And that's the key to healthy eating. And so that's a Hawaiian. You have a barbecue, you have a card for that. And that's and you're almost ready. And let me see, did we get everything? We're about ready to sign off. Ladies and gentlemen, it is just on behalf of one to one, the county of Muskegon, the Culinary Institute of Michigan. Um, these wonderful students. Yeah, yeah.
Dana, Chef Tom, we want to sign out and we want to tell you seriously that God loves you. We love you too. Bon appetit. Enjoy. Have a great night.